Number nine, Denise Keen Barnett. London police officer Sandeep Kunkun was fired from her position after her failure to investigate domestic abuse claims led to Denise Keen Barnett's death on April the 16th of 2020. The victim had contacted authorities about her former partner, 45-year-old Damien Simmons, whom she accused of assaulting her on multiple occasions, as well as hiding a camera in one of the bedroom's light bulbs to spy on her. Kun Kun was assigned to the case and 36-year-old Keen Barnett reportedly expressed her desire to press charges against the man. However, the officer repeatedly canceled interviews, neglected to directly investigate Simmons and didn't offer the victim any safety measures to prevent further instances of violence. Kun Kun officially closed the inquiry just 10 days before Simmons set Keen Barnett on fire and burned her alive. The victim was rushed to the ER with severe burn wounds but died shortly thereafter. Simmons was consequently sentenced to 32 years behind bars. In October of 2020, an investigation was launched into Kun Kun's actions by an independent disciplinary panel, which concluded that the police officer was in fact guilty of gross misconduct, leading to her dismissal from the force. Number 8. Casey Brittle on October the 3rd of 2010, British woman Casey Brittle was beaten to death by her ex-boyfriend, 27-year-old Sanchez Williams, after her repeated calls for help were ignored by the authorities. Over the span of two years, 21-year-old Brittle had contacted Nottingham police about her partner's violent tendencies upwards of 11 times, but officers failed to intervene on her behalf. Williams, who had a long history of arrest for other offenses, received multiple warnings for his outbursts against Brittle, but no domestic violence charges were ever filed. In spite of the overwhelming evidence of abuse and stalking, the victim's young daughter was present at the scene during the violent assault that claimed her life, but the child was fortunately left unharmed. After news of Brittle's murder became public, six police officers admitted to neglect of duty, but none of them were discharged. One was written up, three others received management advice, while the two remaining men suffered no repercussions whatsoever. An autopsy conducted by medical examiners determined that the victim had suffered 27 separate injuries to the face and head inflicted by some sort of blunt object. Number 7. Ashley Barlow Texas resident Ashley Barlow was shot to death by her estranged husband, Terry, after asking him for a divorce. On October the 23rd of 2021, Ashley's family told local police that the couple had undergone a recent separation and that Terry, then aged 53, had been abusive for most of their marriage. The victim's sister indicated that the 37-year-old woman had voiced concerns about her husband's escalating pattern of violence and that she felt her life might be in danger. Images that investigators retrieved from a store security camera showed the man confronting his wife and a second individual angrily screaming at them before pulling out a gun. The recording showed Terry driving away before soon returning, at which point he proceeded to chase his former partner while firing the weapon in her direction, eventually killing her. Ashley's companion reportedly escaped the attack unharmed. Terry again drove away from the scene, then returned soon after and surrendered to the police. Following his arrest, the man refused to plead guilty, rejecting a plea bargain that would have sentenced him to 50 years in prison in lieu of a full-scale murder trial. Terry faced a possible sentence of 99 years to life if convicted by a jury. Number 6. Joshua Fitzpatrick 36-year-old Arizona resident Joshua Fitzpatrick died on March the 31st of 2018 as a direct result of police negligence during a home invasion. The victim's wife, Katrina Smith, had contacted 911 after Curtis Bagley had broken into the family's Phoenix residence. Smith hid underneath the bed while she spoke with the operator, but was unaware that her husband had been stabbed multiple times by the intruder. 
Although police arrived at the scene within minutes and immediately apprehended Bagley, they failed to perform a sweep of the house for over 20 minutes. Body cam footage showed the responding officers joking with the suspect and blowing chewing gum bubbles, while Fitzpatrick bled to death on the other side of the front door. In a subsequent lawsuit, Smith accused the police department of causing her extreme emotional distress and directly leading to her husband's death. Her lawyers also denounced the city of Phoenix for neglectfully releasing 38-year-old Bagley from prison two weeks prior to the attack and failing to provide him with proper treatments for his diagnosed mental ailments. Arizona authorities ultimately agreed to pay the victim's family $2 million in compensation for their consequential shortcomings. Number 5. Linda Villica After failure to investigate abuse allegations led to Linda Villica's death at the hands of her estranged husband on August the 11th of 2019, British police officer Finlay Clark was found guilty of misconduct in connection to the case. 41-year-old Villica had contacted Essex authorities over threatening messages sent by her former partner, Wilfred Jacob, whom she also accused of planting recording devices inside her home. Officer Clark, who responded to the initial 999 call, turned off her body camera upon her arrival at the scene neglected to arrest Jacob and filed an inaccurate report of the victim's allegations. Eight days later, suspicious that Villica was seeing other men, Jacob fatally stabbed her in a premeditated attack. The man reportedly waited until the victim's brother, who lived with her at the time, left for the day before pouncing. He was eventually found guilty of murder and in January of 2020 was sentenced to a minimum of 18 years in prison. After the case was reviewed by a disciplinary panel at the Chelmsford Civic Center, Officer Clark received a written warning for failing to undertake an adequate investigation. Number 4. Kerry Power In 2013, school administrative assistant Kerry Power called the police in Plymouth, England on several occasions concerned over her former partner's increasingly violent behavior. 36-year-old Power told officers that she was being stalked by her ex, David Wilder, and was scared he might seriously injure her. The authorities informed Power that she could make a silent call to 999 if she was unable to speak during a domestic incident. However, they failed to properly explain the protocol and when Wilder broke into Power's house on the night of December the 14th of 2013, the operator hung up on her, believing it to have been an accidental call. The operator asked Power to cough, make a sound, or press 5-5 in order to indicate she required immediate assistance, but Power, unaware of the so-called silent solutions protocol, put the phone down after dialing 999. Wilder contacted the police the following morning, admitting to having murdered his former partner. He was sentenced to life in prison. In 2014, a misconduct inquiry concluded that officers had failed to properly investigate previous domestic abuse allegations leading up to the murder. Number 3. Tara Brown On September the 8th of 2015, 24-year-old Tara Brown was murdered by her ex-partner, Lionel Patia, after the police in Queensland, Australia had failed to investigate her domestic violence allegations. Five days before her death, Brown had attempted to obtain a protection order against 25-year-old Patia following an incident in which he pinned her down on her bed and threatened to stab her with a pair of scissors. She showed police over 270 threatening messages he'd sent between 3 a.m. and 1 p.m. of that same day. The officers that received her complaint didn't believe the messages constituted domestic violence and thus chose not to take statements from either the victim's mother or lawyer who'd witnessed the instances of abuse take place. Brown's petition was rejected and she was told to make a private domestic violence application if she so desired. No official police investigation was opened regarding Patia's threats of further violence. On the 8th, 
The man crashed his car into the victim and used a steel water hydrant cover to strike her over the face more than 30 times. Brown, who'd become trapped underneath her upturned car, was unable to defend herself from the onslaught. Two officers were disciplined following an internal inquiry and there was considerable turnover in the police brass as a result of the misconduct and neglect investigation. Number 2. Darian Haley Henderson Bellman On July the 28th of 2020, Ontario woman Darian Haley Henderson Bellman, aged 25, was murdered by her on-again, off-again boyfriend Darnell Reed. After her death, the victim's grandparents suggested that 27-year-old Reed should have been in jail on the day of the attack, but he'd reportedly been released due to COVID concerns. The man had been arrested earlier that year in May for illegally owning a firearm and had been ordered to stay at least 300 feet away from Henderson Bellman. Reed was detained four times for violating the restriction order in the past. He was released from jail with a GPS tracker, but Henderson Bellman's family claimed that he wasn't being properly monitored. After fatally shooting his ex-girlfriend, Reed unsuccessfully attempted to take his own life and was hospitalized due to his self-inflicted wounds. He remained at the hospital for seven months before being charged with first-degree murder in March of 2021. Number 1. Alicia Franklin In September of 2022, Tennessee woman Alicia Franklin filed a lawsuit against the city of Memphis, alleging that city officials had failed to properly investigate her kidnapping and assault allegations leading to the murder of Eliza Fletcher. The initial incident occurred on September the 21st of the year prior, when Franklin agreed to go out to dinner with 38-year-old Cleotha Abson, whom she'd met on a dating app. When the woman arrived for the date, Abson pulled out a gun and forced her into the back seat of his vehicle, where he abused her. Following the assault, Franklin immediately reached out to the authorities. She submitted to a forensic medical examination and provided detectives with her assailant's phone number and social media handles. The assault kit recovered from the articles of evidence wasn't processed until June of the following year. The DNA matched with Absence three days after he'd already been arrested for the murder of jogger Eliza Fletcher. He was charged with first-degree murder, assault and kidnapping. Franklin's subsequent lawsuit suggested that Fletcher's death would have been avoided if police had expediently investigated her allegations against Absin. Thanks for watching. What is the worst crime that you've ever gotten away with? Let us know in the comments section below.